Philip was sitting on a tree stump beside Mr. V Mrs. Vall's cottage, where Aurora would often, where Aurora often stopped to help with the laundry while Philip cut wood. He was wearing his usual disguise for outside the castle, a simple red cap and matching cape over his gray tunic. Just the sight of him made Aurora smile, and she inhaled sharply, hoping her pounding heart wouldn't give her away. You're late, he greeted, a teasing smile on his face. Aurora made a face. Blue caught me. But she still let you skip your lesson? She must be getting soft, since you're only since you've only got a month left to go. A month still feels like forever, said Aurora. She glanced at the cottage and dropped the satchel of clothing she had brought for the children. Where's Mrs. Vall? She took the children to buy thread. Thread was expensive. One spool was the price of three meals. Aurora gritted her teeth as she touched the fraying threads on her own sleeve. Mrs. Vall had been a weaver before the curse. And these days, instead of creating tapestries that are loom, she'd recycle old clothing into strips and weave them into new garments. Aurora brought what scraps she could from this castle and distributed the freshly made claw clothes to the rest of the village. Because of her, spinning wheels had been banned for 16 years. All needles were prohibited, even if for knitting. This meant that children wore ill-fitting dresses and trousers that were far too big or far too small, and nearly everyone had worn their clothes thin until they'd become rags. Peasant or lord, it didn't matter. Everyone was affected by the king's ban on spinning wheels, and the people felt it most keenly during the winter, where the, when there were barely enough blankets and coats and socks to keep the kingdom warm. During Aurora's visit to the village, she brought us she brought as many of her own clothes as she could though she was a princess her wardrobe was meager she had no more than a handful of dresses yet she still had far more than most she shared what she could but she knew it wasn't enough seeing her people suffer made her angrier with maleficent with this stupid curse that she couldn't do anything about except wait it out the only good thing that it had come of her curse, it seemed, was that her country now traded more heavily with the ki neighboring kingdom for essentials, and that had brought the two countries closer together. Moreover, the trade accord meant the neighboring king visited often, and he brought Philip. Thanks to her curse, Aurora and Philip had grown up together. She couldn't imagine a world in which he wasn't her best friend, her confidant her favorite person in the world. What's the matter, Aurora? said Philip, noticing how she was staring ahead. A month until the curse ends, but Maleficent will still be out there. What if she decides to curse me again? With something worse this time? What if it's not clothing, but food? Aurora looked up at him. I understand why my father banned spinning wheels. I know it's to protect me. But should we be living in fear like this? Your father can't exactly send an army into Maleficent's lair. The moment he lets down his guard around the castle, she'll send one of her ravens after you. Or worse yet, one of the those enchanted spindles she's supposed to have. They'll come flying after you and... He didn't need to finish. Aurora knew what would happen. She sighed. I don't even know why she cursed me in the first place. Well, I've got some news for you, Philip said. He paused, making her curiosity grow. Father slipped, finally. Aurora's eyes widened. About the curse? What did he say? Philip lowered his voice. That Maleficent was upset she wasn't invited to your christening ceremony, so she cursed you. Aurora's eyes widened. That's all? That's all? Philip laughed. What did you imagine was the reason? Aurora shrugged. Oh, I don't know. Maybe she was in love with my father and he spurned her? She flushed at the ridiculousness of the theory. Or maybe when I was a baby, I accidentally scratched her or bit her. Who knows? I've had a lot of time to think about it, and I still have no idea. She linked arms with him and started dragging him back home. Where are we going? Back to the castle. 
Aurora was never in a rush to go home, but this was an exception. We need to talk to Flora, Fauna, and Merryweather. They'll know more.